Hello. Today we're going to talk about psychology. The term psychology has two parts to it. The first part, psyche, and the second part, logi. Everybody's familiar with the ending of this word. We see it in biology, ecology, and all of these kinds of fields. It simply means the study of. But who the heck or what is psyche? It turns out that Psyche was a female Greek mortal, also showed up in Roman mythology, with whom Cupid, also called Eros, falls in love. He wasn't supposed to. His mother sent him to shoot Psyche with an arrow so that she would fall in love with somebody who was quite despicable. Cupid argued with his mother but finally won out and got to have Psyche for himself. Over time, psyche began to mean different things. At one time, it might be spirit, then soul, then mind, and even heart. All of these have been synonyms for psyche. Modern psychology, however, has struggled with these ideas. Modern psychology doesn't really deal with spirit or soul, and in fact has even struggled with the idea of mind. Mind soul, spirit, all of these things seem immaterial, not measurable. And there lies the problem. Today, though, a modern definition is the study of behavior and mental processes. Let's look at the philosophical roots in psychology. To do so, we have to go all the way back to Plato and Aristotle. Plato and Aristotle had very opposite views of the world. Plato felt that knowledge is inborn. You only need to discover it by thinking. He was the original armchair philosopher. Aristotle, quite the opposite. He said, we learn from experience. The phrase, I know in my heart, can be traced back to him because he believed that our knowledge was stored in the heart. He may have gotten that wrong, but he did establish the idea that we learn by looking, touching, feeling, and measuring. And so he was the original empiricist, in a sense, the father of modern science. We can trace lines of thought to modern psychology, starting with these two. Plato influenced Descartes. Descartes also believed that abilities were inborn. He was also famous for the phrase, I think, therefore I am. So he was also a dualist, somebody who thought that the mind and the body were separate entities. Descartes, in turn, influenced Galton, Darwin's cousin. And Galton believed that nature, that is how you were born, determines your fate, and that nurture a phrase that he invented, had very little to do with who succeeded and who didn't succeed. All of these can be traced to what we might call modern determinists. People like Lewis Terman of Stanford, who thought that IQ was inborn. On the other side is Aristotle. Aristotle, as you recall, believed that knowledge came from experience. John Locke, who is famous for the idea of the tabula rasa, a blank slate, he believed that experience was everything. In the 1920s, a man named John B. Watson formulated the idea of behaviorism. And behaviorism said that the proper study of psychology is the study of behavior. And not only that, behavior can be shaped exclusively by experience. He felt you could take anybody and turn them into anything with the proper behavior, the proper rewards, the proper reinforcement, the proper experience. Today we have both modern determinists and modern behaviorists, and of course most psychologists fall somewhere in between. We now recognize the contribution of nature, let's call it genes, and also the contribution of experience. 
Now let's look at the major issues in psychology. Let's talk about some major issues in psychology. The following five issues are, have never really been settled, but play an important part in theoretical arguments even today. The first is nature versus nurture. That is, are you born with a certain set of abilities, or does experience or nurture give you the advantages that you would like to have? Galton, Darwin's cousin, actually believed that you are born with the right stuff, and basically what you were born with was your destiny. Obviously, in psychology, there are people who believe that nurture was everything. And, of course, there are people who believe that everything is a combination of nature, today we call it genetics, and nurture, today we call it learning or experience. A second important thread or issue in psychology is the issue of natural selection. To what extent is our behavior shaped by evolutionary forces? This, of course, comes straight out of Darwin. And today, there are evolutionary psychologists who can explain a great deal of behavior by just using this simple principle of natural selection. Perhaps the most famous philosophical problem of all is called the mind-body problem. Is the mind part of the body or separate from the body? In other words, if you think the mind is just simply part of the body, then you would be called a monist. However, if you think the mind is separate, or if you think you have a separate self or a soul, you are clearly a dualist. Think about this. Who tells your brain what to do? Is there a you, a self, that tells it? Or does the brain tell itself what to do? Do you have a mind separate from your brain matter? These are important questions that affect the way we think about mental events. Another important issue is called stability versus change. If I want to describe you and all your personality characteristics, I would hope that that would be a description that would last over a period of time. Of course, everybody changes a little, but are people stable enough through a lifetime to be described properly and one can develop a theory of personality, for example. Are you stable enough to actually specify a you? If somebody were to describe you, how long would it last? Months? Weeks? Hours? That's the issue. The final one is rationality versus irrationality. Is man rational? And if so, is his behavior predictable by rational models? We're all familiar with economic man, the ultimate in rational models, and you can use that model to show that people don't always act, quote, rationally. But if you dig deeper, maybe your model is not capturing the rationality that's hidden. Well, that concludes our discussion of philosophical roots in psychology and the major issues that come from these philosophical questions.